Hello boys and girls, welcome back to the channel. My name is Theon. Today we have this beautiful blue Longines Admiral on the bench. It's got the fantastic uh, caliber 6651 inside. And we're going to see that in a second. First thing we see, however, is that the watch is very reluctant to run. It runs for like a couple of seconds and then it stops. But uh, the rest of the functions work, so that's all right. For the case, we see it's pretty beaten up and uh, it should be brushed and it's kind of polished. And the mineral glass uh, has quite some scratches in it. So we're going to see what to do about that as well. Let's uh, try to get this baby on the time grapher. Oh, was that it? She said. Oh well, let's open her up. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a beautiful movement. The 6651 is essentially the same as the 431, except that they uh, went down a little bit in uh, the beat rate. We had a little discussion about this in uh, the Lord uh, Marvel video. If you haven't seen that one, and uh, that's an interesting one as well, I think. With the hands and the dial off, we can uh, take off the calendar works. We'll do that before we start working on the other side, so we can take off the cannon pinion also. And you might have noticed uh, that uh, the date is a very rapid changeover. We'll talk a little bit more about that when we assemble the watch again. It would be better to take the rotor off before we take uh, the movement out of the case. But who am I to listen to my own advice? With the automatic bridge off, we're going to let down the mainspring. And I'm a little bit skeptical to uh, whether or not there is more power in the train. So we're going to be a little bit careful taking off uh, the pallet fork. So we do know that something is not good with the watch. We don't yet know what it is. But we do see some wear underneath the ratchet wheel. And there is some play there, a little bit too much play on the barrel arbor. So we're going to have to uh, work on that. That's a pretty common problem in uh, old watches. That's why it's always nice to see uh, jewel bearings for the barrel. For the fault finding in general, of course, we start that uh, before we pick the watch apart. Check all the functions, time graph and so forth. And during this assembly, we inspect each part to see if anything's uh, strange, like this fourth wheel. It is actually uh, how it's supposed to be, but it looks out of place. But uh, we look at all parts to see if there's any damage, wear, and so forth. And the thing is, uh, vintage watches were actually made with the best materials and really made to last. While uh, watches nowadays are made to last a few years and then uh, they replace half the parts in the service. So it's a very different uh, business approach. All right, we stripped down the train side. See that there's quite some dirt, but uh, nothing damaged. The jewels are not cracked. So we can take off the keyless works. And Houston, we have a problem. The winding pinion has had too much candy. Is the tooth missing? Oh well, nothing a little uh, super glue or duct tape cannot fix. For the automatic bridge, it's uh, very similar to uh, the Omega 550 series, actually. Kind of the same uh, concept. A few 
few more jewels but uh, anyway we're going to clean the pivots as well using this uh, e-flex uh, stick it's not polishing the pivots but it's uh, cleaning them nicely then when the balance back on uh, the main plate you can take out the last jewel and get everything ready for the lazy uh, cleaning machine and yes this is uh, how fast we work time is money after all and yes my colleague uh, did uh, receive his first batch of casios so he's busy with that keeps him off the streets so uh, what else can we do let's put the uh, watch parts into our lovely automatic cleaner laziness is a virtue all right while the machine is doing some work for us let's uh, turn our attention to the case we're going to first take off the bezel and uh, the crystal and then let's see just how much dna we can excavate So this is kind of part archaeology, part manicure and part CSI uh, Lausanne. And for the case back, it's in pretty okay uh, visual condition, but uh, it has what used to be a gasket. So we're going to have to replace that, obviously. We're going to put uh, the case parts into uh, the ultrasonic. And get ready for the worst sound known to humankind. <laughs> and after enduring five minutes of that sound in stereo, let's uh, turn to uh, the jewels. We're putting a small drop of uh, 9010 in the center. And then we're putting uh, the chatons back on top. These shock settings are very similar to uh, the Inca block, but I believe they're the Kif Ultra Flex, which was uh, quite common uh, on some watches back then. For the barrel, you might have seen that it says uh, do not open. And while I would normally respond to an order like that with no one tells me what to do, except my wife, we're going to obey it this time and see if it works well enough to uh, keep the watch ticking. But in order to do that, we have to also address uh, the play that we saw in the barrel arbor on the barrel bridge. So I'm going to basically hammer the hole a little bit smaller. With a domed punch and a domed anvil underneath. And when we got it so small that it almost doesn't fit, we're going to use a smoothing brooch. The smoothing brooch will open the hole up a little bit. And in the process, it will also harden or compress the metal around the hole. Then we can put in the center wheel. And then we can put on the bridge. We, of course, cleaned it off camera. And we want to see a pretty snug fit just a tiny little bit of play so that uh, the barrel rotates freely that looks all right now as mentioned in the beginning of the video the uh, 6651 is basically identical to the 431 the main difference, of course, being that the 431 and the whole 430 family uh, is a 36,000 beats per hour movement. There are a couple of small differences uh, otherwise, uh, one being the regulator, but uh, also this uh, fourth wheel that we saw. 
the reason Longin went from 36,000 to 28,800 isn't entirely uh, documented. It was always said it was due to uh, wear. So that could explain the different uh, fourth wheel. But mostly that wear would uh, probably due to a uh, lack of uh, servicing in the proper intervals, which uh, most watch owners are uh, guilty of. And in the high bit movement, there is a higher chance of uh, the oil or grease being flung off the pallet stones at the escape wheel. So that is most likely the reason. If someone has some documentation, I'd be very happy to uh, read that. But overall, I would say that uh, Longin offers some of the very best uh, vintage watches. Beautiful, uh, very solid movements. Very nice designs uh, in a lot of their watches, quite timeless and still uh, uniquely Longin. And the price levels are uh, somewhat more affordable than uh, Omega, for instance. Although the quality is absolutely on par. Nowadays, of course, uh, Longin is uh, more of a mid-level uh, luxury brand. But in the old days, it was one of the very leaders in the market. All right, with the train running nicely, we're going to have to try to fix this uh, winding pinion. So uh, out with a super glue. We ran out of duct tape, but uh, we do have some uh, bits left over of some other metal. So we're going to try to just put that in there. And wouldn't you know, it's like a new old stock. So with that problem successfully resolved, we can get on with uh, the keyless works. It's a very straightforward keyless works uh, system or solution on this watch. So uh, the other day, and just as I had uh, finished uh, my daily wrestling match with my uh, grizzly bear, I was just about to give my uh, boa constrictor uh, Larry a back rub when my uh, son uh, popped in and asked me, uh, Papa, what are you afraid of? Of course, I knew he didn't mean the grizzly nor the boa. He, uh, you know, kids, they sometimes ask things a little bit differently than you would if you are a grown up. So he sort of wanted to ask, uh, what are your fears in life? Because they had that uh, talk in school. So I told him, uh, well, son, apart from uh, your mother, uh, not that much. But uh, thinking about it, I am afraid of uh, losing uh, watch parts. And not only because I'm not that comfortable uh, walking around on the floor on my knees uh, looking for parts, but uh, also because parts for vintage watches are becoming so expensive now. This uh, little winding pinion cost me uh, 30 euros. And that is uh, very common. So that's uh, really one of the problems working on these old watches that if you do have to replace a part, it's uh, very easily going to cost a lot of dough. So how do you deal with that? Well, the easiest answer is, of course, not to lose any parts. And the best way to do that is to rip out that wall-to-wall uh, -wall, uh, thick carpet uh, you have in your workshop. But uh, really to have enough space, both on the bench and, of course, around the bench. So that if something does drop down, then uh, you're able to find it. And uh, to help find parts, there are different magnets out there. But the best one is really this magic wiper from uh, Bergeon. 
It's basically a folded sheet of paper with a magnet on the edge. And it's just brilliant for finding um, parts on the floor or wherever you might have uh, put it. All right, we put the pallet fork in, put a little bit of power on the main spring, and then we can oil the exit pallet. And when I say oil, I mean grease. Given that this is a high speed movement, we need to use grease on uh, the pallet stone. In lower beat movements, uh, we can use uh, oil. So 941, but here we're gonna use 9415. There's no real danger to using a grease on the lower uh, beat uh, movement either, by the way, but after a while you have a few different oils that you need to get rid of somehow. And uh, just to make sure, we did the uh, epilam, the escape wheel, and uh, the pallet fork also. Just didn't show that uh, in this video. And the watch is running. And that is always nice to see. Put the second spinning in with this uh, tiny little uh, spring holding it down. And it's about time to see if uh, we get some performance out of this baby. Just uh, oiling the last few uh, pivots. Then we can demagnetize the movement and uh, put it on a time grapher. And it runs well enough. We just have to adjust it. A little bit difficult to show that on uh, camera because it's got uh, one of those micrometer regulators. So you just have to trust me that I did regulate it. If you want to see a video with a bit more detail on how to regulate the watch, you can see the Zenith Surf uh, video, for instance. Not too much work uh, remains on the movement. Just put the automatic module back together. Can be a bit fiddly, but uh, hey, what do you expect, man? It's a little watch. It's a small machine on your wrist. It's going to be fiddly. But don't uh, diddle your fiddle, as uh, a commenter said. I'm not sure if it was uh, fiddle your diddle or diddle your fiddle. But uh, anyway. Putting a little D5 on uh, the automatic module pivots. Or actually HP 1300, but uh, sort of used to saying D5. Let's then uh, have a look at uh, the date disk and the dial. And the date disk in particular is a little bit uh, dirty. And if we can't get it off, then we'll call it patina. The dial is in very nice condition. There's a little bit of uh, degradation to uh, a couple of the hour markers. But it's not very visible when you have the watch uh, on your wrist. And the color is just gorgeous. So we're going to gently use some uh, lukewarm water to uh, clean things up a little bit. Shine up the hour markers. And that's it.
All right, let's uh, rebuild the calendar works. There are a couple of cool tricks in this uh, movement. We have this uh, pretty much instant uh, changeover. And the way that is done is uh, relatively intricate, but uh, very clever. So this little spring we're putting on here is basically loading and then uh, suddenly releasing that uh, yoke right next to it. I'll see that in a second. There's a spring on the underside of this plate for uh, the jumper. Sorry, I didn't get that in focus. And there's a last spring for this uh, data yoke that goes on top in that cutout. And together these uh, make for a very rapid uh, changeover. As we turn uh, the hour wheel, we see that this uh, spring here is going to load up that yoke. When it gets to the end, it releases very fast. Boom. We can semi-quick set the date by uh, turning the crown the other way. And then back across midnight again. Kaboom again. I'm going to put a little bit of uh, oil on the jumper. And also on the contact points between the different uh, parts of the calendar works. And we're going to forward it a few times. Now the fast changeover is uh, very cool, but it presents a little challenge when you're putting on the hands, because it's very easy to go a few minutes past midnight. So I did that and uh, redid the whole uh, sequence. As we do want to get the hands to change over at uh, five minutes to or to five minutes after midnight. Water to and fro is uh, acceptable, but uh, we like to do better than acceptable. Um, oh, there it was. Now we can use our hand press. And then basically repeat uh, the process for the other couple of hands. And then we're checking that the hands are parallel to the dial. That they do not rub against each other or anything else. And let's see, with the minute hand on. If we get it to change close to midnight. Yeah, that is good. I didn't get a good shot of uh, pressing on the second sand, but it's done the same way. What you need to be careful about is uh, having support for uh, the jewel on the other side which uh, in this case the automatic module provides. For the case then, we cleaned it, but uh, we are going to polish it. So we're going to first take the tube uh, out. And given that this case is uh, quite round, we're going to use a relatively soft wheel at a relatively slow speed. And after we've taken out uh, the biggest marks, we uh, change the wheel and put a brushing effect on it. I was unfortunately not able to uh, get that on camera, but uh, we'll see the effect in a second.
before seeing that however we need to uh, do something about the mineral glass the scratches aren't that bad so we could actually uh, buff them out but uh, I'm gonna just put in a new one instead so to do that we're going to use uh, this uh, crystal press again we're using a flat die given that the glass itself is flat and then we simply press it in nothing a little brute force can't uh, solve and uh, the bezel goes on top of uh, the crystal we also polished the bezel a little bit we're not going to make it look like new but um, at least looks better and then we can finally case the watch There are a couple of uh, small rings that uh, go with the rotor. Basically one underneath and one on top. They're designed to uh, help keep a little bit distance from the bridge and also to tie in the, the screw better. It is a ball bearing so we're going to use a little bit of V106 to oil the ball bearing a little bit and then it's going to move uh, very freely. As you can see, we also uh, polished uh, the case back a little bit. Now let me know in the comments uh, if you think uh, this approach uh, was the right one. That we didn't overdo the restoration of the case. As regular uh, viewers will know, I'm uh, not really a fan of uh, refinishing cases when they don't really, really need to be. But this one was pretty beat up, so we did uh, do something about it. And with that, we can put the strap back on and uh, see how the watch looks on the wrist. It's pretty cool, if you ask me. Big size and beautiful colors and everything. If you like this uh, video, clicking like and subscribe will really help the channel. So please consider that. We'll be back shortly. And until then... Ta-ta! <laughs>